Well, here we are, Planetary Music Project. Jefferson Glassy over here. Hi, and I'm Tara Linhart over here. Yes. So I'm not actually at the Ganga River, but that's where uh, our, our guests are today. We're so fortunate to be able to visit the Devi Music Ashram in Rishikesh, India. But just a little update, uh, Tara, when I last saw you in, in real life person, uh, before the pandemic, we were both in Nepal. That was right. We were in three dimensions. People used to gather that way in actual same space and everything. In, in person, yes. We had a great trip. You led the tour. Um, I was in, in India. I came up to Nepal. We interviewed, interviewed Kiran Nepali for That's right. the second project, uh, planetary music project. And then I went on your tour, your arts, culture, music, trekking tour, which was fabulous. I mean, two weeks in Nepal was great. Um, and then we came home, got the last flight out of, practically out of uh, Kathmandu and made it home. And you stayed for a while longer. Now you're back in Virginia, right? Yeah, that's right. I stayed for another seven or eight months. And uh, here I am back in the USA, back in Virginia. But I do plan to uh be leading some more tours back to nepal maybe maybe this fall so we'll see how the the pandemic goes but uh yeah if people are interested i i am planning to do that as soon as we can again so yeah that'd be great well we all want to get out of get out of do this again but yeah uh, we all need to do some traveling after staying in our own house for like months at a time right so, so the idea with this planetary music project is to go visit places around the world, musicians, uh, musical communities, talk with them about their, their music, their songs, their culture, their instruments. And um, we're fortunate that we can do this um, virtually. Um, I happened, I was in Rishikesh, long story, but I ended up walking to the Devi Music Ashram and it sort of changed my life. I have to tell you, it's a wonderful, beautiful place. So. Why don't we uh, introduce our hosts, uh, Devi from the Devi Music Ashram and Raj Sanganaka. They're going to come on this, come on camera here now. That would be great. Oh, there they are. Hey, Devi. Namaste. Namaste, Tara. And Namaste, Jeff D. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You look, you look so beautiful there in that gorgeous outfit. Both of your outfits. Yes. Raj, too. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but Raj, it's so, so good to see you. It's been, a, it was about a year ago this time that I yes. just happened to walk in and you were so nice and, and showed me around. Niti was there and we played some music together. I came to some of the events and, and we've had some, uh, some good programs together since then. Uh, and so Thank just you. so glad that you're able to, to join us. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. Very happy to be here and see you and talk with you. Thank you. Yes, thanks. So uh, Tara, would you like to introduce Devi? Hi, yes. Um, uh, Devi is a, a, a wonderful singer actually, if I'm correct, yes, in, in India. And um, I was just wondering how, I've, I've seen some of your videos and uh, I definitely recommend everyone out there to to check out some of your, your videos and your music uh, from any place in the world. And I think that's one of the beauties of some of the things that Jeff, Jeff and I are doing with the Planetary Music Project is people from all over the world can find out about new music and new musicians uh, from the comfort of their own home. Um, I was just wondering, how did you first get started in music? Where did you first decide, where did you see music and decide, I want to do this? Yeah, actually music came into my life very naturally. I think art is a God gift. When you have inside, it's come naturally. You don't decide anything, I think. So music in my life is very natural. Even I remember when I was only three or four years old, when I didn't have so much mind, then also I started singing and I was popular in my uh, area. My neighbors uh, used to like my music. So it's very natural. So did your did your parents um, help you find uh, teachers to, to help you further your musical studies? And did you have friends that were also on this path uh, of learning music with you? Yes, actually my father is very uh, open-minded and uh, he always supports if someone is interested, interested in anything. 
So when he saw me that I'm interested in music, and my father also loved listening music. He's a, I think, great uh, lover of music. So when he saw that I'm interested, then he uh, uh, he talked with one teacher and he started to come into my home. I belong to Chapra, it's uh, Bihar. So mm. my teacher started coming and teaching me music. Did you, I, I know for me, a lot of the friends that I have a lot of the community and I think the the family that I feel like I have are people that I've met through music. I, do you do you find that you know in your lifetime that a lot of the friends you've met they don't always have to play music. They could be people who come to listen or also to play. How is it for you with the meeting people and and building community? Yes, you are very right. You are also a very great artist. I uh, listened to your Mandolian. And yeah, it, for artists, it's very easy to make friends because whenever we start singing, people get curious, people come to you and uh, art really attract people. I think it's a quality when uh, you are creative and you have some music. I think it's uh, very uh, easy for people to uh, connect with you, talk with you, because many times people feel hesitation to talk with someone um, whom they don't know but with the music they feel some kind of uh, connection you know public feel the connection with the artist and they easily without any hesitation they come they ask and i think it's very easy way to make friends it is it is interesting the way that people who are normally inhibited if they see you play music all of a sudden it's like a magic has happened yeah. and they just come to you and they tell you things and they you know, it, I, I don't know how I would meet people without music sometimes. The other, yes. one more question. Uh, one more question is, in, in Rishikesh, do they have many different styles of music? Or, or what, what type of music, what do you call the type of music that, that you play and that is popular in the area? For people, the rest of the world that don't know. Uh, actually, uh... Music itself is very, uh, all kind of music attracts people. And um, uh, it, it's, it's uh, Rishikesh in his Garhwal. So there is a Garhwali music uh, is there. But in my ashram, uh, we do uh, mostly uh, classical music and some spiritual music, uh, devotional music. People, I think uh, here the atmosphere is very, uh, devotional i think lots of people come for for spirituality they want to know about god so in the ashram mostly we uh, do uh, classical music and uh, devotional music but sometimes we also do different style because i sing also i'm very popular in uh, many parts of india for my folk music so sometimes mm -hmm. i also sing uh, folk music and I sing uh, some modern music also, some pop music also, but most of the time we are in classical music. And, and that's, it's that Indian, Indian classical for folks that may be listening in, in the United States or in England or something. So yeah, uh, thank you so much. So Jeff, you had some questions? Or... Yeah. I'll hand it over to you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Tara. Um, so, so Raj, um, I, I have been there. It's a wonderful place, but how did you end up um with the Devi Music Ashram, how did it start? How did you how did it end up in Rishikesh? I mean, Rishikesh is such a spiritual place. Um, I went there to really, I decided to spend some time there because I knew Maharishi had his ashram and the Beatles had been there in 1968. And that's the only reason I went and I was fortunate to find find yes. you. But but how did you get started? Oh uh, well um <clears throat> uh, it is started, I think, very organically, like, you know, like a plant, it doesn't plan to grow, it just grows. So the same way this ashram also started, I feel, we were very attracted to Rishikesh because the view of the Ganga and the atmosphere here is very nice. There's spiritual energy here of many great saints, I feel. So we were coming here uh, in the beginning as a tourist. So we just wanted to uh, have, uh, you know, a house here or some place to stay. That was the uh, basic 
plan, but uh, slowly, uh, because we all are in music, so we decided to make a music place where people can come and learn music and share music. So this, you know, the word ashram means like a, a, a shade, like a shade of a tree or something. Mm-hmm. You know, where you can sit and you can relax, you can feel secure. So we decided to, because there's so much power in music, I think music, if we learn music, if we do music, most of the problems of the world can be solved with music. Okay. So this the idea came to us that let's make a music ashram where people can learn music, share music, and we can provide some genuine and good services to people. So people can have a nice experience and transform their life with music. So this is, and it's growing like slowly. We all are in music. So it's slowly, everything came together in a right way. And I think you told me that uh, most uh, ashrams, reg- regular religious ashrams, have a guru or a master, but that's not the case with the Devi Music Ashram, is it? No, there is no guru here. There is no freedom, total freedom. We believe in freedom and uh, we want to explore things. So there is no, no any fixed idea or fixed things. Usually in an ashram, there is a guru he, he has his own ideas and you have to follow that. So, but we, we are free, we are open to all ideas and every, you are open to uh, explore, you are free to explore anything and everything. So I, I was wondering, do you have an educational component to the, the, the programs that you do at the ashram? Do you, do you uh, provide it or encourage anything to help people find ways to learn music there or no? Uh, uh, well, uh, you know, in Indian music, uh, the way to learn Indian classical music is always been from guru to the students. There is no such thing as courses. It's, it's, it's a very uh, like it's a meditative process. Mm. Uh, so we, we do it in the same way. We also learn from some gurus and we also teach in that way. So it's mostly you just listen, you interact. And in India, I feel, you know, in India, music has always uh, been a, a way of, it's not just uh, for entertainment, but it's a way to re uh, of enlightenment way to 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 know the in uh, to ultimate it's a, like it's a spiritual process here i so, i know when i when i lived in benares uh a few years ago i i remember i was so moved and interested by the way that people listen to music differently like people would pride themselves on being very good listeners and they would count all along with the with the with the song and know exactly where they were um and you know it's an unusual thing a lot of times in the united states for instance where i'm from people do listen very intently some some just talk and ignore the band we'll be honest um especially if you're playing bar gigs or something but but the fact that the so many people in the audience in an indian classical music or raga style thing actually were counting they knew exactly where the song was they knew exactly where the raga was it was and they they would actually have private concerts and invite people based on how good a listener they are i thought that was just just beautiful you know yeah there are some listeners also they know a lot about music many times in india the listeners of classical music they have some idea about the music and the rhythms and talas things like that. So, so Devi, the, the, the music ashram is, is named for you. So uh, tell us a little bit about what was your perspective on 
having this music ashram and and what 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 do you think about it what do, what do you like about it uh, i feel blessed to have this ashram because in this uh, because of this ashram uh, we get chance to meet great people you know like we met you because of this ashram so i feel it's a very good idea and i want to thanks my father actually uh, the idea of uh, this ashram is uh, came uh, through my father so i really want to say thanks to my father for making this uh, uh, beautiful place uh, where we do music and we also get chance to learn other culture because here people come from africa people come from china people come from america so whole we connect whole world so in this way our knowledge is also growing you know we are also uh, uh, learning social sciences i would say because when i was in uh, one place like in mumbai or in bihar so i had no idea about what's happening in the world so because of this ashram we are uh, definitely uh, learning many many new things meeting great people having great experiences and we are uh, sharing music so i think it's a wonderful experience and i think i'm very very blessed for this i i would wonder too because it is a music ashram and if it's attracting musicians to come and stay there as you mentioned earlier that people once they've played music together it's like they're kind of related now you know like even if i have never met someone if i play music with them for an hour we know each other well in a way it's very strange it's like you become family very very quickly so then when they start talking they've already played music together it must be i'd say uncommon in the way that people can make friends quickly and and lose the inhibitions is that is that true or yeah definitely it, it music in itself is a language you know even if you don't know what you are saying is so true yeah. like yeah. if you just play music together you are you already know each other definitely definitely that's yeah. so right you have you have maybe someone from italy some people from from you know africa some people that have different languages but when they play yes, music yeah. together yeah because yeah, no friends so, Yes, through music you express so much emotions, so much uh, uh, values. Everything is there in music. When you play music, all your personality is revealed. So it's a very good uh, connecting uh, uh, way of connecting with somebody through music. It's amazing. Yes, I uh, when I was there, uh, I asked Raj if he would show me the sitar a little bit, and he did. And then I rather boldly asked, well, I was thinking I would like to play a song here in Rishikesh. I thought maybe over at Maharishi's ashram, but you all had the whole setup right there. And, and Raj and Yahur and I played a song that I wanted to play. It was almost like the highlight of the trip. We did a lot of great things, Tara, in, in Nepal, but playing yeah, Raj and Yahur <laughs> at the Devi Music Ashram, we played Imagine. It was, it was so special. Uh, you know, and I wasn't there that long, but I met uh, uh, Sandro Shankara from uh, Brazil, who had a whole group of people. I met him at the ashram, and he told me about the people that uh, he was with. He had taken a tour over there, and so now we're friends. We we stay in touch, and uh, it's it it is quite a community you can create through uh, through music. But it, you know, it would be great um, if Raj could. Sort of take show us around a little bit in a little virtual tour with his phone. Uh, tell us where you are, and and Devi, if you want to uh, comment on anything that we're seeing here for everybody. You know how this okay. technology works. You just turn your turn your phone around, and and then we can yes. walk around and see. Sure, I I show you now a little bit. Okay. So this is. I'm where I'm sitting is the reception area. Is this also where people would maybe jam and play music together? Uh, well, we have uh, lobbies everywhere on each floor, oh. so people can jam anywhere. But we have a dedicated uh, music hall on the second floor. I will show you that in a little bit. Hmm. So this is like reception area from, I show you outside, from outside. Show us outside. I want to see your cows. 
for your cows out yes. there? So that was a sitar and an isaraj on the wall there, I think, in the other room. Yeah? Yes, yes, I, I will so get back there. Indian, oh, that's okay, classical Indian instrument there. Yeah? Yes. So this is the, from outside, Devi Music Ashram. Cool. You can see, this is the entrance here. We have a little garden here. Nice. So what, what do you grow in the garden? Uh, mostly just plants, different. We are not really growing vegetables, but we plan uh -uh. to because we have or cows, they, they eat everything. We have some swing here. Yes, it's nice. I remember walking by there. I was, I was My at cows. The, there's the cows. Hi, cows. Hello. <laughs> Hey guys. So these are all girls, yeah? Uh, this this is boy. One boy. One boy. Four girls. <laughs> wow, you have five cows. Yeah, this Welcome is... Uh, the swing, you can sit here. It's so windy today. Ah, uh, yeah, we, we heard the wind a little bit when you came out. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, there's that, that little sign outside that uh, has the program, the weekly program. Yeah. Oh, so you have like uh, weekly concerts or something? Yeah. Wait. Yes, we do every Tuesday and Saturday programs here. Yeah. Have you been still able, are you doing them now? Or are you having to be closed for the COVID or open again? No, uh, yeah, things are better now. So we have started it again. So it's uh, going on. Yeah, I hear it's actually yeah. going fairly well in India in many ways. Yeah. Um, so this side is the reception and this side is the dining area. Yeah, people can eat. Oh, nice. So nice. Uh, here also, there's kitchen inside. Uh huh. Yeah. Food is served here. People can hang out here. We here also we have some instruments. Oh, great! This is Tanpura. Tanpura. tanpura yeah. I have yeah, a, a Tanpura app on my phone. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> it's a drone. It's a very hypnotic sound it creates. <laughs> and it's very important in Indian music. We, we can come back there and learn more about it. That's my plan. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> maybe some people will see this video and come there too. And, yeah. we'll, and we'll this, this side, we, all, we already have, I showed you. Reception. Yeah, yeah. You were asking about the instrument, yes. Yeah, I have a friend named Saraj who plays this Isaraj in Nepal, actually. Yeah? Yeah, this is a very nice instrument. It is played with a bow like a violin. Mm -hmm. And here is the sitar. It's beautiful. I'm glad I don't have to. This is it. painting. Yeah, it's hard to carry. This the is water. painting. Uh, nice. Made by my brother-in-law, Yahor. Oh, okay. He's a very good flute player. I was uh -huh, great. And like also, Yahor's. Yeah, he was also a very good painter. Yeah. Mm, very good, yeah. So uh, now we go, go up. Yeah, let's go upstairs. I, I remember upstairs. doing this. I'm wondering what kind of place is this? I stumbled into. I have to say that one of the things I love about South Asia, both India and Nepal, is you just never know when you walk out the door on any given day what you're going to just stumble into. You know? so the many library. library. Nice. Yeah. I like that. Who painted those? That was nice. One of our friends. Ah, okay. From Russia. She painted. Here we have books. Mm-hmm. 
so people can read different kind of books about music and also philosophy different things are there classrooms in there too is that what those other rooms are uh no this is uh, some uh, rooms for where people can uh, stay where people stay uh yeah so if i'm sorry if i'm moving fast oh no it's good it's good perfect it's good. very very nice here is also rooms where people stay It's a huge place. It's actually, it's very nice. I know, isn't it like four, four stories, four floors? Yes. Now we are going on second floor where we have the music hall. Here is some information, notice board. A very clean notice board. Yeah. Uncommonly organized notice board. <laughs> this is the music hall. Wow. That's a really special place. Nicely labeled. That way you can find everything. Ah, it also looks like you could do yoga there. Uh, actually, it is a still, we did a concert yesterday. Uh -huh, so right. still, all the rugs are there. And uh, there you have a uh, sound meditation. Yeah, sound meditation every mm -hmm. Sunday every Sunday night. I went to one of those. It was wonderful. Sound bowls and things. Here we have electric piano. Right, right. Got your keyboards. And the nice stage you got there. Beautiful with the tablas on it. That's I it. used to study tabla actually. I studied in, huh. in Nepal for a year. And then a little bit in Benares also. Beautiful. It's my favorite drums. Yeah, we have different instrument. We have some recording facilities also here. This Good is the sound. little sound booth. All um, right, okay. Nice. That's where the sound person goes, the sound engineer. Wow, you have everything there. It's such a great place. Maybe I'll come there and make a recording sometime. That would be fun. Yes, yes, you're most welcome. So uh -huh. this is the stays. We have a little Krishna statue here. Mm -hmm. With his Bansuri. Yeah. In India, you know, all, all gods are also musician. Mm. Krishna is a flute player. Shiva plays Damru, is a drum, Damru. Mm. Okay. And uh, Saraswati plays Veena. Wow. So all the gods are musician here in India. That makes a lot of sense to me. And God, uh, Ganesh is, is, uh, often has tabla with him. I have some Ganesh yes. right, playing tabla. So it's I always respect Ganesh because he is the God of timing. And what would I be with bad timing? So always, you always can see some respect. mountains <laughs> ah. from here. So those are, are, those are the Himalayas. Yes. Yes, the Himalayas. So Here have, we also have. You're actually there, you're north of, of Kathmandu, which is interesting, I think, for some people. They don't realize India actually goes north of Nepal, right? Uh, yes. Here also we have rooms for people to stay. And now we go up. How, how, many, pe how many people can stay there at one time? Uh, about uh, we have uh, like 15 rooms and each room can accommodate two people that's so awesome beautiful so, like, 30 people 40 people can also accommodate here we have some dorms also here also we have rooms on the top floor wow i show you show you the room this is the room oh nice yeah so nice working table there you can write all your brilliant musical ideas in there yeah and big washroom oh that That's is awesome big.
the balcony. Wow. Yes. Do you, have a, do you have a rooftop there as well? Yeah. I'm, I yes. think Raj, Raj is going to show us up to the roof, I think. Yeah. Now I will, yeah. I will show you the rooftop. This is a plant creep which came from down all the way up. Wow. <laughs> in winter, there's no leaves, but in summer, it will be full of leaves. Right, right. Nice. Well, right now here in Virginia, I have to say, our winter does not look nearly as green as that. Everything is looking pretty dead. Oh, yeah. We had snow and ice this week. Mm, it going so here. You can see the, the village and the mountains oh yeah and so much life happens in south asia on the rooftops um, it's a wonderful thing you get to the roof you can do meditation have the sunshine there you go. i hear and that wind up there yeah yes and that's the, 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 gong, the ganga goes down the right there right this is the swing you can sit here and enjoy the wind yeah it must be beautiful and peaceful here also we have this one room here this is a nice. great place oh you know after i heard about the music ashram i thought there should be a million music ashrams around the world you know this is such a great idea. Um, okay, everybody... so that was That's pretty it. much it. That's beautiful. Just relax, sit down back again. I I just wonder, have you guys also, I I, I remember you just said that you had uh, done some traveling. Um, and I just wonder, Devi also, I think, does a lot of traveling now. So um, have you encountered other ashrams around India with a musical focus like yours? Well, uh, I have not. Uh, I think this is the first uh, music ashram. There are all kind of ashrams, but the music ashram is uh, something uh, new. I think this is something cool. that we start. I know it just it blew my mind entirely. It still does. Um, so that to the point that you know we thought uh, we should start an international music ashram association, which we did under the Planetary Gig Society. There's no membership or dues or anything, and there's only one music ashram listed there right now. But we we did have a oh, we did more. <laughs> yeah, we remember Raj. We had a conversation with uh, Victor Wooten. He talked about Wooten Woods and and Biko Cassini with uh, Rising Appalachia, and he talked about the the farm where he grew up, which is kind of a music ashram. So maybe it'll be a new thing. Maybe it'll be a new thing. More people learning music, developing communities and in, 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 in sharing resources in these types of places. It's such a wonderful spot you have. So Debbie, I was just wondering, do you, do you travel a lot for your music around India or do you also leave outside of India for your music playing? Yes, I travel all over India and also abroad. Uh, because a lot of Indian people are uh, staying outside of India and they have community. So when they have festival or uh, they have some uh, good occasion, they invite me. Great. So where, where have been some of your favorite places that you found a beautiful sense of community with the music? Favorite, favorite places you like? <laughs> Actually, every, it is hard to say that um, where I felt the best. I think every country has uh, their different flavor. I went to mm. Moscow. I went to Mauritius. I went to also Gulf countries, Qatar, Dubai. Mm. I went to uh, also Thailand. So all countries are, have something unique. And, uh, and uh, through music, you connect with everyone. So it was very nice. And uh, yeah, I like uh, all countries, I will say, the different flavor. <laughs> Have you been to the United States? Not yet, but I will come to meet you for sure. Okay. That sounds great. That sounds great. Well, I have to say in, in the United States, for, for me, my mind was blown uh, when I went to my first big uh, fiddlers convention. It's a thing that we have here. It's uh, 
traditional in the Appalachian Mountains. And honestly, many Americans do not even know about them. But it's where you get hundreds, sometimes thousands of musicians together. And there is some contest. We play in some contests for the violin or guitar, different things like that. But most of the time is spent, we just are teaching each other songs and playing music for fun. No one is paid to perform, no famous bands, only playing for enjoyment yeah, for maybe it's... three or four days, some of them for one week long, like Galax Fiddler's Convention, one week long, some of them. And I learned so much of the music and I found so much of the inspiration at, at things like that, where everyone is just like that, like in an ashram sitting where everyone is just there to enjoy and celebrate music. So uh, hopefully I can bring you to a, a, a bluegrass uh, fiddlers convention sometime. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it really is amazing just the community that uh, comes through music and we sure need a lot more of that. Um, what are your thoughts for the for the future? What are you gonna gonna do? We're getting out of COVID hopefully soon. You're you're back in in operation. Um, you're just gonna continue inviting people to the music ashram and learning music and staying there and doing your programs. Is it, is that right? Yes, we will continue with that, and we are. Uh, uh, we we like to create more good relationship you know we are like not in a hurry to make it big you know we want it to grow but organically naturally so we just want to provide good service and good uh, atmosphere for musicians for people and slowly everything is uh, going good and we are happy <laughs> well well you're such an inspiration to me certainly having you know just dropped in there somehow some way um and it you know there's there's something to be said i think for you know people in the west learning more about um eastern music indian music it's so complex it's so beautiful it's it's different than a lot of what we have but it's it's amazing and so you know thank you so much for the inspiration for just saying let's thank have a music ashram it's so so awesome what you all have done there thank you so much okay so this has been so great to be able to see all around the the music ashram and learn about what you're doing here but we certainly would love to hear some music maybe you could uh uh, show us some of the music that you do, Debbie singing, Raj playing the sitar. Maybe uh, maybe we can check out some videos you guys have. Yeah, we'll see some videos. Um, we When we started this, we actually played with the people we were interviewing, but we can't do that this time. So, um, all right, let's, let's check out some of these videos. Oh, 
man, that was some really nice stuff. That was great. I just love it. That stage is wonderful. You sound so wonderful, Debbie. I love the right. sitar playing Raj. Thank you so much. It's really great. I, Thank I, you for putting on that I, show. Debbie's, Debbie's voice is so beautiful. Oh mm. my goodness. Very tasty. Very tasty music. <laughs> so great. So I guess that's about it, Tara. I don't know when, where we're going to be next. Um, we, we may still be here in our own houses. But we may visit. <laughs> We may visit somewhere else too, but so thankful that we're, you're, you're able to give us a little tour, spend some time, uh, Devi and Raj, to show us, tell us about the Devi Music Ashram and show us around. And uh, I know people can find you on the on the internet too, but um, you know we really very much appreciate uh, knowing you and, and that you've been able to help us with these programs. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. We'll see you in person sometime. Sometime soon, hopefully. We'll see you. Yes, yes, I want to invite both of you to our ashram, and uh, it will be our great pleasure to serve Taraji okay. and Jafji. <laughs> and I'm also a very good cook. So you Ooh. will get a delicious uh, Indian food I can make for I both of you. I very, am a very good eater, so this will work out very well. <laughs> oh, that's good. Good combination. Good combination. That's great. That's great. Yes, and... Uh, I want to thank Jeff G for your great support and I really excited to meet you in person. So I hope after all this COVID goes, you come and Tara G also come and we create some great time, some great atmosphere and uh, eat some tasty food and uh, do some nice music. Yeah, yeah sounds perfect. <laughs> yes, well, we, we can go over to Maharishi's ashram and play some music there too. I'm looking forward to that. I'll play music okay. wherever they want me. How about okay. that? All right. Thanks very much, everybody. Namaste. 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 Thank you. Namaste. 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 Namaste.